Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you from which part of the world you're joining us from. I'm Narayan from Fresh Service, from Fresh Desk, and I take care of product marketing here at Fresh Service. Uh, before we begin, I would like to do some basic housekeeping. I would first like to know if you guys can hear me loud and clear. So please use the raise hand symbol next to uh, in go to webinar to let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. Let me see some hands go up. There you go. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. There you go. All right. Uh, the next thing I would like to tell you guys is uh, whenever, uh, as and when you guys have questions, please feel free to use the questions chat window in GoToWebinar and please give us your questions. We will uh, take care of your questions. We'll handle those as we reach towards the end of the webinar. Let me welcome you to this webinar titled Life on the Service Desk in 2016 and how to improve it. Uh, today's speaker is Stephen Mann. Well, he needs no introduction. People know him. But for those who don't, uh, Steven is an independent IT and ITSM content creator, blogger, writer, presenter on the challenges and opportunities that ITSM people face. He's also one of the usual suspects tweeting at hashtag ITSM on Twitter and this really fantastic Facebook group called Back to ITSM, which I strongly recommend you join if you aren't already. But I digress. So which, uh, without much further ado, I will ask uh, Steven to take over. Steven? Yes, thank, thank you, Dwayne. Um, thanks for the kind introduction. I'd better get on with the content as we have a lot to talk about. So over the next 40 minutes or so, I'll cover everything you need to know about my latest STI, that's the Service Desk Institute member survey. I'll start by giving a bit of background on the survey, then I'll get into some of the meat of the content by covering stats related to ITSM tools, tool vendors and tool selection, operational pain areas and life on the service desk, and what the future holds for the service desk or service desk in general. I'll also throw in uh, a few tips along the way. And as you can tell, I've finally got my slides to use. So before we start proper, uh, let me give you a bit of background to the SDI survey. Uh, the Service Desk Institute surveyed its members at the end of 2015, looking forward to 2016. And a report based on the survey findings was written by SDI's resident industry analyst, a, a gentleman called Ollie O'Donoghue. This report looks ahead at 2016, but also refers back to 2012 survey data. So you'll see a lot of that in my slides, which was the last time the SDI ran the survey. And one thing that's worth mentioning as well is that the SDI report was sponsored by Lorraine and his fresh service colleagues. So you can download the SDI, SDI report if you want to, to, to get all of the information from the fresh, work, fresh service website. Uh, the link is shown in my slides here, so bit.ly forward slash SDI dash report. So, so feel free to do that at your leisure. Lorraine will probably mention it again at the end of uh, the webinar too. So on to the first of the three survey results areas. Well, there are the three areas that my mind is created from the report. It's not as Ollie designed it. I just sort of put them into con convenient buckets to, to talk through them in, the, in this webinar. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is ITSM and tools, tool vendors, and tool selection. And this includes ITSM tool and vendor frustrations, or vendor related frustrations, the level of innovation or not received in uh, ITSM tools, and also what influences tool selection for the service desk and the wider management remit. So, the first question that I, I want to look at is. What are the top five frustrations with ITSM tools? Here, respondents were asked to list their five key frustrations with their current ITSM tool. And this was by way of freeform data capture rather than using a, a pre prepared list. So, Ollie had to drop the related responses into categories to allow some sort of structure and also comparison with the 2012 report. So, what did the SDI members say about their ITSM tools? So we've got 11 different categories, features, reporting, usability, etc. But before I get into my analysis of this, it's worth me stating that you know, greater detail as to what makes up these things, um, each of these frustrations, can be found in that downloadable report. So for instance, for the features category sitting there at the top, the frustrations included things like lacking automation in core processes, lack of mobile interface, limited browser support, limited self-service functions, no integrated CMDB. You sort of get my gist. So if you go to the report, 
you can find more of the data that backs up solid statistics. And when I look at this, and I have to say, I'm a little bit sad about it, if that's the right word to use, but this chart to me looks a little bit like the same old, same old, not from Molly, but from people's opinions about their IT service management or service desk solutions, and that little has changed between 2012 and 2015 especially when you consider some of the feature-based frustrations that I just rattled through. We can see here as well that reporting is still a big issue and I'll come back to this shortly. Although it is nice to see that usability and customization, while still frustrations, are marginally better than they were in 2012. But probably one of the most interesting things on here for me, outside of the, the big hitting frustrations, is that Reliability issues, and there's a jump there that looks pretty ominous down in the bottom left hand corner of the slide, as do the frustrations with speed and process. And it's this thing that sort of gets me thinking as to whether a lot of these frustrations are born out of maybe an aging IT service management tool. But we'll come back to that shortly. Because to me, I think it's worth us comparing this data set with the responses related to IGSM tool innovations and improvements. I think it gives us greater insight into some of the issues that service desks are having with their tools. So, a separate survey question asks respondents to list three key innovations or improvements that they'd like to see in their ITSM tool in the next 12 months. This is again via free form responses with Bolly then having to place them into categories to allow comparison with the 2012 research. And you can see that there's a, a big jump in, in feature requirements between 2012 and 2016 with the requirements offered up by respondents including, and again, I'm just going to read out a list here. I do actually have them on a slide later on, so uh, hopefully that'll be helpful. Predictive knowledge management, the ability to run problem analysis, improve chat capability, translations made easy, request fulfillment tracking module, better workflow functionality, better search functionality, those sorts of things. And for me, whilst these things are relevant, I'd argue that they aren't really innovations, just improvements on existing tool capabilities. I know that was part of the, the question, innovations or improvements, but uh, you know, it, it, it worries me that these things are, are still being asked for rather than being part of the service desk variety service management tool or solution that uh, STI members are already using. And there's also adverse increases in frustration levels for uh, reporting, usability, and process integration. Again, worrying from my point of view. But it is worth pointing out that some areas did fare better. Mobile offering, for instance, I, I, I think tools in general have done a lot better from a mobile point of view, configurability, and also social media aspects. But it's the comparison of this chart with the one that I previously shown you. Uh, related to frustrations that, that's really interesting for me that uh, if you actually put them together then you can start to see you know is, is there some commonality here is there a is there a, a similar story with features reporting and usability the top three categories in both um, it looks like there is to start off with but if you actually dig down into the detail that the types of responses that are collated into these high level categories you can see that they aren't actually telling the same story at all and I'll pause for a moment so you can compare and contrast these two features. So these are the things that I rattled through earlier on. So I'll just give you 20 seconds or so just to try and take that in. Okay, I can't actually stay quiet for 20 seconds, so I think I probably gave you about 10 there, but I think what we're seeing here is, is two different perspectives, and it's sort of no way scientific, but when I look at these two lists and, and think that the, the frustrations are, are caused by SGI members having invested in the wrong tools, say, whilst the requirement for new innovations and improvements is probably the result of using an old tool, whether newly purchased or already having been used in anger for a number of years. You know, looking at the list at the left, you know, the required innovations and improvements, you know, the knowledge management, the translations, request performance, better workflow functionality. Now for me, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, these things are to be expected in a modern IT service management tool or solution. And I'm looking at the things on the right, the frustrations, 
the lack in automation in core processes, you know, that should be bread and butter, or the lack of a mobile interface, or limited self-service functions, or not having a, an integrated CMDB. You know, for me, I have to ask, you know, weren't these things requested and selected the IT service management tool? You know, so, while on the face of it, the two questions and the SDI member responses show, show similar issues, you know, those top three headline categories, or symptoms you could probably call them, you know, for me, I, I think they're actually, in fact, probably the result of two different root causes. There's, of course, a mobile app in that you, know, you can't get away from the fact that an old tool can be the wrong tool and, and vice versa. So if, it, if this is the case, you know, what should you do? You know, what should a frustrated service desk team do if they feel as though they've got an old tool or a wrong tool and, it, and, it's, and it's holding them back? And I probably need to warn you here that I'll keep doing this throughout the webinar. I'll throw out five things you can do slides. I'm a little MCG, so we'll always be groups of five. You know, once I started with five, I just had to continue with five. So if you are frustrated with your IT service management tool or, or service desk tool, and these are five things that I think you should do to at least get your mindset in the right place. Now, firstly, admit that things aren't right with your tool, unless of course they are, and you can completely ignore this slide. But that admission is, is the first step to recovery. It might sound similar, uh, familiar to some of you. And I think it's also important to have a, a mindset that doesn't want you to sync with a capsizing service desk for IT service management tool. It's not a it's not a, a mad panic everybody to the lifeboats, but it's definitely a case of you know, there has to be something better than we have at the moment in that you and your customers deserve better than a tool stuck in two thousand and six like. And it's also worth recognising that Sticking with the cheap option might actually be costing you more than it saves because a lot of the time you don't want to move because of the costs involved. So it's worth considering value over cost or how far from optimal your IT operations are with the existing service desk or IT and tool. Uh, importantly for me, it might not be as cheap as you think when you factor in operational inefficiencies. And then fourthly, recognize the importance of, of getting your business requirements right. And if you are going to change, if you have changed and it hasn't worked out for you, now make sure those business requirements are right, and I'll, I'll come into some detail on this in a minute. And the required thoroughness of the tool selection process is as it needs to be, in that an ITSM tool or a new ITSM tool should be treated like any other business investment. It's not a purchase. It's an investment in a better way of doing things and hopefully better business outcomes. And then finally, and this is a bit of a cheeky uh, leading to another list of five things, I can't help myself, Consider some of the freely available tool selection best practice tips. And there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet and, and with vendors, whether it's Fresh Service or, or, or anyone else. And I say this is where I, I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat in my five tips. So I'm going to give you five tips for ITSM tool selection. But firstly, remember that if you ask the wrong questions, you'll get the wrong answer. There's so many customers or so many companies ask for everything they could possibly do with an ITSM tool rather than what they actually need to do, or even are, are capable of doing with the resource and, and maturity that they have from an ITSM perspective. So if you make a decision based on things that you're never going to use or never be able to use, then you probably are going to get the, right, the wrong solution to, or the wrong answer to your questions. Secondly, I think it's important to understand what you need to accomplish from a business outcome, not an IT operations perspective. Importantly, you know, come at this from a you know, what you need to achieve point of view rather than what you need to do. And don't be distracted by the available technologies. You know, I, I've seen this a lot in, in my many previous roles that you see all the bells and whistles. And in doing this, you know, it's no different from bullet point one, to be honest, that you're going to make a decision on and ultimately pay for things that you don't need and probably won't use. So focus on what your company needs. And importantly, Try not to be too steered by what the market says you need. You know, again, stay focused on outcomes, not low-level features. And so ultimately be crystal clear about which high-level requirements are must-haves versus merely nice-to-haves. You know, keep focusing on the right things until you agree on that solution for you and your company. But there's so much more to be said that I, I do feel like we'll have to offer another five, and I'll rattle through them so we can get back to the statistics as quickly as possible. Now, try to remain impartial. Buying based on a vendor, in, in terms of I want to go with vendor X, without even understanding how well 
that vendor's tool or solution fits your requirements is just as bad as buying based on bells and whistles. But I have to admit that the right vendor will ultimately make a huge difference once the requirements are met. Also, leave the vendor enough room to explain how they can help rather than limiting them to just saying that they have features in X and Y, you know, the traditional RFP, why, no, question mark. And also, don't forget to scope in any plan for you to imply, uh, for you to improvements to operations. And this one might seem to be a little bit cheeky, but I'd also say don't always take vendor responses at face value. You know, if something's really important, then, then look for greater detail and perhaps even prove that what the vendor offers exactly meets what you need them to deliver. And then finally, and, and this is really important for me, I, I'm an ex-accountant, uh, I'm still paying for it unfortunately, now consider how a dollar saved into a licensing might cost you $10 in its day-to-day -day operation. I look to the big financial picture of new tool introduction. You know, the licensing costs, you know, by the time you've added, added in, let's say, implementation slash professional services costs, and then the uh, ongoing operation of the tool, including uh, service desk agents and anyone else involved from an ITSM perspective, that you might be saving on the licensing, but it might ultimately cost you when you take in that total cost of ownership or total cost of operation. So, right, I'm going to jump back to the survey results. So, in addition to asking about the frustrations SDI members have with the right of tool, on this survey, I also asked respondents to list five frustrations with a current ITSM tool vendor. These were again into categories to our comparison with the 2012 research. And as you can see from a slide, while well better, the quality of vendor support is still an issue, which is quite ironic if I can be cheeky for a moment, mean, given that vendors are selling support tools. Um, you know, it, it doesn't quite stack up from my point of view. And, and worryingly, and I think this might be a big part of it, relationship and lack of communication have both jumped massively, probably suffering in issues that were previously tied to understanding in, in 2012. And Coming back to the previous question, frustrations with the level of innovation has also increased slightly. There is some good news now, though, that uh, there's fewer implementation issues. But I would question whether this is merely a positive effect from the growing adoption of SAS tools. Say. So, what can companies do if, if they have frustrations or are expecting frustrations with ITSM tool vendors? You guessed it, it's, a, it's another top five list. And, you know, I'll rattle through these and again we can get back to the statistics. So, so firstly, realize that an ITSM tool purchase is so much more than just the acquisition of software or a SaaS subscription that it really should be or needs to be an ongoing two-way relationship. It might sound a bit cliche, but you know, we, we look at these stats and we continue to see the same old, same old. So you know, we've got to break the cycle. So, Rise above the usual non-functional selection criteria, such as vendor credit rating, say, to understand what you really need and expect from a new supplier in terms of that relationship. Um, <clears throat> you, know, you need to look beyond the RFP responses to get market feedback on supplier performance across things like support. You know, there's big issues about support. You know, find out about support. Find out about relationships. Find out about innovation. And this can be done via industry analysts say if you want to take some aggregating information or by dipping into communities. So for example, you can go for analyst reports or if you're uh, lucky enough to have a, a subscription with a, with, a, with a decent analyst firm, then you can have one-to-one -one calls, I would assume. And then hopefully you are going to get the aggregation of, of customer opinions as analysts suck them in and you know, they'll, they'll form their own opinions based on what the customers are saying. Or if you don't want to go down that route, you know, look for peer opinions. You can jump into a, a vendor customer community say, or you can Google and search for issues and it will probably end up in the same place. Or you can post questions via social media or use communities such as Back to ITSM on Facebook if, if you do want to uh, reach out and, and find people who might be using a, a tool that you're interested in. Or even when you're at events, you know, the more you chat with peers, the more opinions you'll hear. I really like this fourth point. Um, I probably won't, but you know, I'd say hijack the sales guy or lady by asking, you know, what are the top three product innovations in the last 12 months? You know, their response and their face in particular would probably be a good gauge of the vendor's focus on innovation and improvement. 
Now ask them the question that they're not expecting to get. And then finally, and this is really similar to point three, I track down and speak with more than just the offered customer references. It really is a, a deeper dive than just posting the questions that uh, I spoke about in, uh, in point three. So I've covered vendor frustrations um, and also ITSM tool frustrations and also the issues that customers have with vendor innovation. So now I want to look at the factors that are influencing service back and IGSM tool selection. And, and here respondents were asked to pick their top five influencers from a list. So it's getting a little more structured now. And uh, I'd really be interested to know how they stack up with, with your thinking. So <clears throat> there's quite a lot to take in here. Uh, more than welcome to uh, sort you out with the top of the slides. Lorraine will probably make them available uh, after the webinar, uh, you're probably scanning it, trying to work things out, but I'll continue talking anyway. So looking at the, uh, the left-hand side, uh, I, I think first it's important to note that price wasn't included in the choice options here, and we all know that this is a big influence on purchasing decisions these days, especially when the finance organization or procurement team have a big part to play in the process. But what's interesting for me is that automation is top, and you almost need a, an extra level of granularity here because you know, automation is top, but is it due to the required cost savings from the service desk or, or, or is it the need to, to work smarter, not harder? Or is it to do with the growing customer expect, expectations on quality and speed and you know, is, is automation not just the service desk, but is it also from a, a self-service point of view? And you know, it could be all of those, you know, cost savings, smarter, not harder, and, and also meeting uh, growing customer expectations on uh, the quality of service they get. And it's also interesting to note that automate, automation is higher than the product features. The only thing I can think here is that customers now assume that the core IHSM capabilities are a given, the proverbial table stakes when, when playing in this space. Um, it's not always a, a good assumption to make. Uh, also worth noting that ease of use and UI have doubled in importance. And, and to me, this has to be due to the consumerization effect where our personal life experiences and expectations of technology are pushing up what we expect in the workplace from, from corporate IT. Uh, as expected, self-service capabilities are ever more important. Um, it's also worth me saying now that, I'll come back to this shortly, that real world success isn't often as easy as we'd like, as we'd like to see though when it comes to self-service. The importance of support has jumped too. And again, I, I, I'd like to link this to consumerization, but you know, is vendor support worse or have customer expectations jumped again based on our personal life experiences? So I really do think it's most likely the latter, just that we expect so much more now when it comes to service and customer support. Flexibility state, state level and interestingly, modern capabilities and actual alignment are, are now more important than we were in 2012, which uh, you know, a lot of people talk about the uh, the death of ITIL or uh, a lack of interest in ITIL, but it wasn't shown in the survey. Then looking on the right-hand side, for me there's, there's three interesting changes. The choice of deployment model and previous experience of a tool are more important, whereas peer references are less important. We seem strange to me in the days of, days of social media. I would have thought that um, you know, speaking, speaking with others that uh, can say nay or yay to it being a good experience with a vendor at all. I would have thought we'd have been doing far more of that, but uh, not according to the survey. And interestingly for me as well, that business platform capabilities, let's say for enterprise service management or even customer app development, aren't a big influence for service desk staff. Um, the only thing I can think of here, or I can imagine maybe that if the question was asked to to, to senior management that we might have seen a, a higher rating for this. And finally, and Lorraine might not like this one, vendor marketing is least important at 2%. But you know, I, I would talk this one away because I, I think that this isn't the fact that vendor marketing isn't working. I think it's that vendor marketing merely takes the customer up to a point after which other factors take over in decision making. Okay. So I'm going to change gear and, and move away from, from tool sets now. I've probably done that once again. To look at operational pain areas in service desk life, specifically the biggest pain points for service desk agents 
and whether service desk life is getting better or worse, which is, which is quite a question. So respondents were asked to select five self-service pain causing options from a list. So again, we, we sort of narrowed the choices down here, or, or Ollie did in the survey. But please note that <coughs> whilst in 2015, or end of 2015, they had five choices, in 2012, they were only given three. So it makes it impossible to directly compare the two years percentage-wise. Uh, so just please bear that in mind, and uh, as, I, as I click on to the next slide, uh, again, I, I'm going to be interested. Uh, I'd love to see how many of you will nod when I show you the results. So as you can see, we've got reporting at the top of the pile, closely followed by outdated or complicated service desk tool, i.e. a tool that makes service desk life harder than it needs to be or, or already is. But it's probably worth flipping to a 2015-2012 comparison slide here as it provides a, an extra dimension to the analysis. So as we saw earlier, the, the issues with RTSM tool reporting capabilities are, are nothing new. Uh, you know, it was also number one in the service desk pain causing stakes in 2012, and it really does make one wonder why it's still the case. Um, but for me, the big news is that outdated service desk tool is seventh to second in the pain causing list, now with a crazy 50%, i.e. One out of every two respondents feel as though the right attempt tool is making their life more difficult. <laughs> I'm almost lost for words, to be honest. Uh, I better move on before I say something inappropriate. Then we have low self service adoption rising now at 42% and in sixth place for 2015. And as you can tell, it wasn't in such a uh, rocky position in 2012 when we were probably most likely still just dipping our toe into the self service water. You're probably going to want to look at this chart in your own time because there's so much in it that you can interpret from. Whereas I, I feel obliged to throw out another five pin slide. So, what five things do companies do to um, help with this? And you know, there's a lot of stuff on here, so I decided just to choose self service. But people like to talk to me about, I want to give you five things that you or companies can do to up their self-service adoption. The first thing for me, and I'm probably not going to talk too much about culture here, as I mentioned, uh, I'm on to management culture, because that's probably the first thing you expect me to talk about. The first thing I'm going to talk about is investing in better knowledge management and realizing that, that while it's about the process of capturing, distributing, and effectively using knowledge, it also requires that cultural change to be truly effective. You know, you can, you can lead people to, to knowledge management capabilities, but you can't make them drink you know, or, or actually use the knowledge management technology, so, or even uh, self-service technology on top of that. Secondly, we can be a little bit too focused on self-service, and we do need to offer choice. We need to recognize that self-service isn't going to be the best solution for end users all of the time, but some IT issues require response that's more immediate than self-service or that individuals have personal preferences. I know I like to use self-service in some companies and not for others, or some scenarios and not for others. And also that self-service might not be suitable for some roles, that you know, there might be a, a trade-off from a cost perspective where it is better for the business if they actually get a human to sort them out, ASAP, rather than trying to self-help. So whatever the scenario, Health service should be offered as just one of many available access and communication channels. Uh, and as part of that, you know, we need to support mobile access. But access to corporate mobile app-based self-service capabilities is unfortunately not as prevalent as online self-service portals. The last statistic I saw, which was from the HDI rather than SDI, uh, is that in 2015, on average, only one quarter of organizations that offered an online self-service portal offered a similar service by mobile app. So if you're mobile, you're not going to mess around with an online portal by your mobile phone. You're just going to call the service desk. So you're going to suffer from an adoption perspective. And it's also important to recognize on the back of this the difference between UI and UX, that a big part of self-service success is user experience. And that if end users find self-service capabilities intuitive and easy to use, that they'll most likely use them again and again and again and again. And that every end user touch point should be optimized for the best possible user experience. And this is equally applicable to mobile apps as it is to online self-service portals. And then finally, you can't get away from it, 
you do need to use fit for purpose technology, but given the rise of consumerization, you know, the stuff that's bringing our personal life experiences and expectations into the workplace, you know, the technology has to cater for what I would call the Google generation across the UI, UX mobility, and also potentially social capabilities. So back to the statistics, we've covered the service desk pain points, but how was service desk life? How was it, rather, during 2015? So in the SDI survey, respondents were asked whether life on the service desk has improved, become more difficult, or stayed the same. Probably would have been good to do a poll now to see if the audience was indicative of the SDI sample. So for 2015, it's roughly half quarter quarter across improved, difficult, stayed the same. For me, it's not great that 23% of respondents think the life on the service desk has gotten worse. And unfortunately, without further questioning, it's difficult to understand why beyond the already covered areas such as reporting shortfalls or the outdated IT central hindering operations, etc. You know, I can't help think that there are many other factors in play here that we haven't touched on as part of the webinar and part of all this survey, you know, such as high staff turnover, increasing work volumes, workplace stress, and low morale. And, other factors too. In many ways, that's a, a survey and a webinar in itself. So there is some good news though, if we look from 2015 to uh, 2012, an extra 10% of respondents are, are now in the improved segment compared to 2012. Uh, but again, I don't have the detail beyond that because it would be great to know what has caused them to move, not necessarily directly from uh, life has become more difficult to it's better. Yeah. I imagine it's a mixture of uh, going from more difficult to stay the same to improved, and of course improved might have gone to a little different, so it's, it's probably a, a mishmash of uh, movement between the, uh, the SCI members and their responses. So, <clears throat> I've been talking away at a rate of knots because I keep looking at my, uh, my watch here, and I always have a lot to say, unfortunately. So, one final lap, you'll be, you be pleased to hear, and I'm going to talk about what the future holds for service desk now, including which activities consume service desk in 2015, uh, future service desk priorities for 2016, and also what service desk expectations are for change in 2016. So, where did service desk spend most of the time in 2015? And again, here, response were asked to select all the options that apply from a, a predefined list that, that Barley created. And, as you can see, the top two activities are unchanged from 2012, firefighting and implementing new processes. In many ways, you're probably never going to knock firefighting from the, from the top of the list. It's sort of what we do uh, in IT service management from a service desk perspective. But implementing new processes, you know, number two, I, to me that poses the question, you know, did implementing the new processes actually make a difference if firefighting is, is, is still top and, and, and so high? Again, it's, it's a question we can't answer with, without more granularity. So I'm going to sort of push on into what I see as, as two new entries in the top five. That's, again, struggling with the current service desk. Uh, also struggling with self-service adoption. You can hopefully see now why I covered both of these earlier on, but it, it's interesting to see them rising to, to the top within all of these questions. And in, in many ways, I like to think it validates a lot of the responses. Sometimes you worry that the questions can drive the answers, but I think the fact that you keep coming back to this is indicative of it actually being a, a true representation of, uh, of, of the real world. So again, I'm going to throw out some more five, some more, uh, some more tips. So this time related to, to what can be done in 2016 that's different to 2015 and 2012, and probably all the years in between. I think it's really important to question whether implementing new processes is actually making enough of a difference, you know, given that we see so many similarities between that 2015 and 2012 uh, chart. Um, and maybe it's better to improve on in place rather than only something new. It's probably a controversial thing to say, because uh, I can also argue that you know, sometimes we, we put too much effort into improving incident management, say, and neglect change in uh, problem management. But um, it's, it's something to consider, you know, you question that. 
And I think it's, it's vital to focus operational improvements on, on working smart or hard at the time that I mentioned that. You know, especially through automation, self-service and knowledge management. But it, it really is the way to, to free up uh, people to, to remove some of that pressure on service desk agents in particular who are just far too busy these days. And I think it's also important to quantify, and I've touched on this already, you will need to also stay with a service desk variety of some tool that impedes operational performance, but you really should question you know, the operational inefficiencies, maybe the adverse business impacts, and, and also the opportunity costs of staying with, staying with the wrong tool just to save on licensing costs or to avoid the, the change involved. I also think it's important to propose service desk change based on better outcomes rather than just changing the inputs across the, the usual people, process and technology. So despite what I've just said in point three, you know, we really need to be saying that we need to reduce incident handling times because of X and Y versus we need a new tool for incident management say. And then finally, you know, I think I do think self service is so important. So rather than throwing something in here, I just want to push you back to those previously shared service adoption tips. Um, but I'm not going to repeat myself here, thankfully. But what does 2016 hold for STI members? Uh, you know, what, you know, what are they going to, to, to focus on? Let's have a, another look at some stats. Um, and you can probably guess what I'm going to say here, that little has changed between 2012 and 2015, 2016. Again, you know, three of the top three priorities are the same as in 2012. Now that's improving service desk performance, increasing business value, and increasing first time fixed rates. And I could go on a bit about first time fixed rates, but we don't have the time. But importantly for me, the top five is rounded out with two new priorities, which conveniently again stack up with responses to the other questions that of using more automation and, and succeeding with self service, which I guess you could argue overlaps with 2012 response related to reducing calls and, and emails, but I still think it's important that it's in there. Um, there is, however, and again, this pains me somewhat, something in here that doesn't stack up against you the data, although I, I can personally understand why. And that's investing in the IT Send tool. You know, it, 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 it's low down on the list and, and probably not indicative of what we've spoken about, whether it comes to pain points or anything else in the early questions. And, you know, usually, you know, I'd say that investing in a new IT Send tool isn't the automatic answer if things are right. So, you know, I, I, I'm no different from anyone else in terms of saying, you know, don't assume that a new tool is going to change all the issues. But, you know, the respondents highlighted, uh, you know, unnecessary frustrations, or what I deem to be unnecessary frustrations, and also unnecessary improvement requirements with the ITSM tool. Then they've gone on to rank the ITSM tool as the second biggest, biggest pain point. So I do have to question, you know, why I'm looking to change. And I guess it's another one of those questions where, we need at least another question to be asked to truly know the answer out to things like cost, the migration efforts, might even be internal politics, fear of change, or, or many of the factors that are making people not look to a new IT service management or service desk tool or solution to help them out a little. So you'd be pleased to know, because I have been talking rather fast, that I've reached my final question. Um, this is where SCI members were asked their expectations for 2016. Um, they were allowed to select as many options as they like from a list of possible responses. And um, you'll see a couple of repeat offenders here that the greater use of self service and also increased demand for business intelligence, which to keep things simple, we can equate, although it's not the same to re the reporting issues of earlier. But there are two areas in the top five here that I have yet to mention or I mentioned one slightly in passing. Um, the greater focus on customer experience, which is top of 69%, which to me is a, a real standout. And then also down at 35% is the increased demand for non-business services, i.e. Uh, the move to enterprise service management. Uh, and these two things, which I, I guess in my opinion are, are two of the main ITSM challenges and opportunities that I'm seeing for 2016 and beyond. And unfortunately, I have no time to cover these here, but Fresh Service does have info that I've created previously to share uh, based on both of these. So, 
final uh, list of five things. Uh, you know, these are things that I think you or companies should be doing in terms of winning with 2016 service desk and 90% priorities. Uh, firstly, I think it's important to determine what's actually needed by your organization rather than following the herd. I think it's great for me to, to show these stats, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's right for your organization. So for instance, I've spoken a lot about self-service, but self-service might not be needed by your organization, or it might never work given your company structure and culture. Uh, secondly, I do think it's very important to understand what customer experience is, in particular versus customer service, customer feedback, actually user experience, there's a lot of terminology that can be confused. It's also important to, to start to look at better outcomes rather than going down the blind adoption of new processes or even new technology. So that's more of a, we want to improve service quality and speed rather than we need new sort of service technology say. And I think it's also important to distinguish between things that are improving by others to make a difference and those things that are just good ideas. Uh, it's probably wrong for me to call it out, but I remember the push for social IT a few years back, which never really took off, but people couldn't stop talking about it for a very long time. And finally, remember what your service desk capability is needed for. Uh, you know, with ITIL, people like to talk about people, process, product, which used to be technology, and partners, the four P's. But I think we definitely need a fifth P here, that you know, we shouldn't forget the purpose of the service desk, and it's easy for that to get lost as we get stuck in the weeds. So, that's all of the, the SDI stats and of my uh, five point list. So I think I've run a little bit long, so apologies for that. Oh, I need to come back and do a summary slide shortly. So I'll pass you back to Lorraine for now, and uh, uh, please bear with us while we just hand over uh, the controls. Thank you, Stephen. I hope you guys can uh, see my screen. Um, anyway, uh, thanks, Stephen. That was great. Uh, that was a great walkthrough of the report. And uh, uh, let me quickly tell you guys uh, about us. So we, the company, Freshdesk started back in 2010, and uh, we launched our first product called Freshdesk again, uh, a customer support software in 2011. And then we realized that you know, a lot of uh, customers of us were using Freshdesk for their IT service desk use cases, and that's when we realized that. Uh, we probably had an opportunity there for uh, to create a, a great, a very usable and a, and a well-designed IT service desk and IT solution. And that's when we launched uh, Fresh Service. And as you can see, uh, right now we have uh, more than 70,000 customers for Fresh Desk and Fresh Service. And uh, we launched a new product called Hotin recently for mobile-first companies like Uber. And uh, Fresh Service is, like I said, uh, uh, we are IT services kind of IT solution, and uh, we have more than 7,500 customers. There are, we have some great names as customers across the globe. Um, so, like the report said, like Stephen uh, uh, said in the report, uh, a lot of people right now in the in the industry, a lot of service desk and uh, ITSM professionals are struggling with bad tools and uh, you know. And, uh, and really, you know, uh, tools that were like built uh, a decade back, more than a decade back, legacy tools which are not easy to use, which take uh, arm and leg to configure. So th that's where Fresh Service kind of uh, brings in a, you know, uh, a new era of uh, IT service and ITSM solution. Um, I'm going to quickly, uh, you know, uh, run through you guys through some uh, screens of the product. Um, yeah, so that's our. Uh, uh, ticketing um, view. Uh, so the best things are customers tell us a lot of tools they have been using do not really show them context of what is happening. They get a, uh, they get to see an incident record and they don't know what's happening. There's just no context. There's no. So when people reply to such incident records in fresh service, there is uh, you can see context. You can see what's here. You can see previous previously replied to incidents, tickets, and all associated problems and changes uh, in within a single window. Uh, that's our service request catalog. It's a pretty uh, uh, cool uh, Amazon-ish looking service request catalog, and uh, that's our sales service portal. Now, the you know, the amazing thing here is this is designed in order to uh, uh, 
to get users to solve things on their own. Uh, like you see here, there is uh, somebody searching for uh, a particular thing and we throw up uh, KB articles automatically pertaining to this particular issue. And uh, we ship with gamification, inbuilt game mechanics to, uh, to make sure people have fun on the job while really having giving people a competitive edge. Um, in fact, one of the issues mentioned in the report was ITSM uh, vendors, IT services tools uh, vendors aren't really innovating. Uh, this is something which uh, our customers love in fresh servers. This is really uh, because IT service desk, if you look at it, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty monotonous job sometimes, and you are left you know, replying to incidents day in and day out. You are it's a pretty thankless job when somebody works really well. No one really comes and says, hey, you know what, thanks, my Mac is working. But when something breaks, they really get on your nerves, right? So it's a very thankless job. And game fiction has really, uh, really revolutionized the way IT service just uh, function. Uh, that's, again, our gamification uh, screen. Um, I mean, I would like to look, talk about this, but all day, but um, I guess we are short on time. And that's our admin. Uh, console um, so uh, and the uh, last one of the least we have a great mobile service test which has again uh, really found great traction among our users because well, let's face it we have access to great tools and great apps outside of work like Twitter and Facebook but when we, when it comes to work we are left with really boring legacy tools that are hard to use that are so 1980s right so this again something which we uh, shipped uh, last year and it has really found great traction among our users. People are really finding it seamless to work uh, while they are off or when they are in their lunch break or on vacation. They just have to uh, fish out their phone and relate to that odd ticket and get back to vacation. So uh, that's, uh, I would love to show you guys more but we are really short of time. Uh, Steven, do you want to get back to, uh, with the summary? Do you want to summarize the webinar? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's ultimately about doing what's right for your organization. I think, as I said earlier, it's, it's helpful, to, helpful to consider what you're doing to provide a better service experience or to improve oper operational efficiency or, or potentially even to reduce costs. So uh, you need to do what's right for you. But, you know, these are some things that, that are at least worth consideration. Uh, you saw it in the questions. You know, add automation where it adds value. But on the flip side to that, don't automate bad processes. You know, make sure processes are right first. Also, do whatever you can to get self-service and knowledge management right. The help and guidance is out there. Uh, and, and, and sadly, that it's important to try and get it right first time if you can. But the more you fail here, here that the harder it is to succeed in your next attempt. For me, it's, it's very much the corporate version of, of one step and fly shy, where people will really loathe to come back if it didn't work the first time. Uh, if applicable, I do think it's important to question the suitability of existing service desk like IT and technology. You know, is it the wrong tool or, or even an outdated tool? You know, either way, is it causing you pain and operational inefficiencies? Uh, I mentioned it towards the end. You know, you need to look at how customer experience will impact the demands on your service desk and also the wider IT organization. And, and you'll definitely be hearing so much more about this during 2016. And then finally, we spoke about reporting a, a lot at the beginning and, and, and maybe we should have thrown in some more about it. Now, ensure that metrics and reporting do the ethics of the service desk team justice. You know, report the right stuff to the right people in the right way. Probably so much more we can say on that, but uh, very wary of the time. So, have you worked on a to Q&A, array? Oh yes, we have some questions here. Uh, so, uh, this first question is, uh, can you say more about the service screen, Stuart? Uh, Stuart, I think you should take this because you know SDA way longer than I do, so you should take this question. Yeah, yeah, it's probably worth doing. I suppose it depends where the, uh, the audience is or the or, or attendees are, but, uh, you know, if you're in uh, the Americas say that you, you probably know very much uh, about the HDI, the organization formerly known as the Help Desk Institute, whereas the SDI, the Service Desk Institute, is something, well, well first it's worth saying it's a professional body for 
uh, people that work in the IT service and support industry. Um, but they do have a global reach, but probably many, many members are actually in EMEA. Uh, although having said that, <laughs> uh, they are doing a, a conference in Mexico this year. So uh, they are expanding their reach globally. And I think it's important to point out as well that they've been around ooh, probably close to 30 years now. So it's not something that's new. They, they do have a, a rich pedigree when it comes to helping professionals in the, uh, in the, the service desk environment. Oh, great, great. Um, there's another question. So why do you think reporting continues to be below par for ADSM tools? Uh, I would love to debate this question <laughs> as a vendor, but I think I'll leave this to you for, for now. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a tough one because in, in many ways it's a bit of a mystery because you know, if, if, you, if, if you look at the survey or any other survey uh, from, from 2012 and you see that it's an issue and it's causing customers pain and it's probably causing customers to move from vendor A and tool A to vendor B and, and tool B, uh, you, you'd have thought that, that, that something would be done about it. And, I guess in many ways, it being high, uh, you know, not all vendors and not all tools are, are born equal. So we're not saying that all vendor tools have, have bad reporting, and you probably would argue, argue with me in the rain if, if I said that anyway. I, mean, I can only assume, and it is an assumption around the fact that not enough sales have been lost because of poor reporting, or not enough uh, customers have been, been retained, or well, too many customers have been lost because of poor reporting, that maybe reporting is always seen as secondary to the ITIL processes that the tool supports. So it's never probably been as, as much of a vocalized bugbear for, for vendors to do something about it. Uh, and like I say, you know, reporting will differ from, from vendor to vendor and, and, and tool to tool. And I like to think that, that things are improving. Oh, great. That's another question. So you mentioned that you didn't think the list of innovations were really new things. So what is new? Uh, let me uh, answer this question first uh, before passing on to you, Stephen. So uh, if you if you ask me, uh, a lot of ideas some tools and vendors um, are... So if you look at the big names in this in the industry, right? So you, you can think of maybe a couple of legacy uh, players, uh, there there is, so if you look at, for example, if you look at on-premise concept, right, there is, uh, there is really, there is a huge constraint uh, as opposed to cloud, for example. So cloud suddenly opens up a, a whole new gamut of things like integration with other cloud players. So it's not one thing that really makes it new or old, it's, it's, I think it's a factor of many things, like if you look at fresh servers, we are constantly innovating by I showed you a couple of screens about gamification, and uh, so I think uh, there are like there are things which vendors are doing. At least we are doing. Uh, is I think if you look at legacy tools, it's really hard for you know, one to really step out and uh, because the the tech world is changing, right? When there is uh, there was Twitter, Facebook, suddenly there is Snapchat, and tomorrow there will be something else. So to keep pace is. I think it really takes an agile environment to do it, and uh, well, we are doing it. Um, Stephen, do you want to add some uh, pointers to this? Yeah, and, and you've got a very valid point in terms of cloud in particular, allowing, uh, well, firstly, more rapid development of uh, new, new features of functionality or capabilities, and, and also from an API perspective, bringing in uh, capabilities from, from third parties to or, or, or matching things up. Probably three things that I, I, you know, I would look to from a, an innovation perspective would be, and you saw this in, in the survey. You know, the first thing, you know, automation, uh, you know, especially from a self-service point of view. Uh, you know, just having self-service as a, a replacement for uh, somebody phoning or somebody emailing, and and then it being manually uh, worked on after that. You know, it's. It, it, I, I don't think that's really good for anyone, to be honest, and, and probably makes a mockery of self-service. And then on the reporting front, two things. Uh, firstly, business intelligence to understand more about service desk operations and the wider uh, IT service management or IT operations environment. And then also mach machine learning, where I think uh, 
you know, if we you know, if we look to uh, our personal lives and Amazon, Netflix, etc., then I think particularly from a self-service point of view, the, the technology can help more above and beyond static uh, static data. You know, it can it can understand what uh, what people actually want from a, a service or a, a help point of view. So, so those are the three things I've mentioned. I think from an innovation point of view. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, there's one more question about uh, so a very fresh service based product based question about gamification. So okay, so I think we have five more minutes. I'm going to quickly take two minutes and let me see if I can show you a very quick uh, demo of uh, uh, Stephen. Can you see my screen? You can, right? Uh, yeah, it's still show Yeah, it's just changing now. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna take. Two quick minutes to all right. So let's see. Let's go to uh, anyway. So uh, this is fresh service. This is how it looks. Just the uh, dashboard, and I'm going to navigate to admin on top. Uh, let's see. Uh, just go to arcade. That's right here. Um, so what you see right now is the point system. So when an agent results an incident in a uh, ticket in like say an hour, 23 points on time with an SLA 10 points and. Uh, uh, late overdues, minus 10 points, and bonus points for FCR, happy customer, unhappy customer. And there are various levels that you can reach, beginner, intermediate, professional, right? And the interesting, it gets very interesting here. So you go to quests, you can assign, uh, you can create new quest, uh, let's say, uh, to resolve tickets, right? So when you resolve, let's say, uh, 10 tickets in a span of, say, uh, an example, two days, and uh, uh, to keep quality in check, you don't want people just closing tickets. Right? To keep quality in check, uh, let's add a condition saying customer satisfaction rating is awesome, right? So this will uh, give you, uh, let's say, 500 bonus points, and you get to pick a badge saying uh, the fixer. Right? Uh, let's go back to this another kind of quest you can send your team on um, publishing solutions. Again, let's say you create uh, 5 KB articles in a span of a week. And again, to keep quality in check, let's add a new condition called number of likes for each is greater than five. Same drill, you bonus points, you get to uh, pick a badge. And uh, so, uh, like I said, IT sales disk is a very, you know, it's a very thankless job. Uh, when the internet works, no one really comes to you. But when things break, they just hound you. And um, so, we thought uh, motivation was like a key factor that is really uh, not great in the IT service desk industry uh, and people uh, keep changing jobs every now and then. The main reason is because you know people really uh, they, they don't feel, uh, they don't feel uh, thankful enough, uh, people don't feel thankful enough for what the IT service is doing for them. Um, so we are trying to solve that using uh, uh, gamification. I see another question about the uh, the cell service uh, uh, thing we showed. So I'm just gonna take one more minute to show that. So th uh, that's nothing, but uh, you know, so when people are trying to raise a ticket, we try to. Uh, so this is a cell service portal. So they have to go receive a new ticket by clicking a new ticket or report instant. So first service is designed in such a way uh, that we want users to take care of their own things. We didn't want them to. We don't want them to come to the service desk for every password reset. Right. So, for example, when somebody is searching for, say, a printer or something, so we throw printer-based KB articles to the right. Um, um, so this has really, our customers say that this has really helped them decrease the load on the search desk, and this really getting them to take care of things that actually matter, right? And not, I mean, and not repeat the same password reset incident over and over again. Now this combined with the gamification I showed you where you can create a quest to send your team on a quest to create KB articles, it's, it works brilliantly for our customers. So I'm going to uh, go back to the presentation now and let's see, I think we have one more question, one or two more questions. All right, so why do you think sales adoption is still an issue for many companies is uh, from Newton. Uh, again, Stephen, I'd like to take a crack at this before passing it on to you, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. It helps if I take myself. Yeah, we are doing. Right? Uh, so you just asked. Um, Self-service adoption is still an issue for, for, for many companies. You know, what's, what's the reason? I think 
quickly, if I try to ask this quickly, I, I think it has to be that there's still too much focus on the technology and also uh, what they call the field of dreams, build it and they will come mentality to it. And I think it's important for companies to, to flip this, to, to view self-service about people um, and making them want to use self-service. Um, and, and importantly, to yeah, actually deliver something uh, that... While rolling out sales, this, the sales tool, I think they don't really uh, understand what the user wants. They just you know roll out the tool because they have like deadlines to match. All right, so I think we are uh, we are out of time here. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. It was a great webinar and. Uh, uh, if you want to download a copy of the report, um, the URL is right there. So please go ahead and please download a copy. Or we will anyway mail you a copy of the report uh, 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 shortly after the webinar. And if you want to check out Fresh Service, please uh, go to freshservice.com slash sign up and please go. You you get a, you get a 30-day free trial. Please use it. Uh, play around and please get back to us if you need help with it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. That was great. And I uh, will see you guys soon on one of our webinars due this month or next. Thank you. Have a great day.